Hey everyone, welcome to DeepView. I'll be doing a demo of the program and the different modules that you have access to here at the open beta launch. To start with, on the left-hand side, you can see the menu. This is how you can navigate between different modules. Uh, to open up this menu, you can click here. This brings up the names of the different modules. You can see you can hide the menu right here, navigate to the screener, deep list, alerts, education, account, or support areas. To start with, we'll cover the screener and let's go ahead and hide this menu. First things first, you can see we're currently watching the data columns here in DeepView. These are completely customizable with whatever data points you would like. Uh, you can see this is my current setup here. And in order to edit the columns, what you want to do is navigate over to the gear icon right here, give that a click, and you're able to select whatever columns you would like, either by using the drop down menus or by using the search bar. Once you want to add a particular column to your settings, what you would do is simply give it a check and you can see it's automatically added here on the right hand side, as well as live here in your data columns. If you would like to reorganize your columns, what you can do is simply click and drag and you can see it updates in real time on the right as well as on the left. Once you're satisfied, you can go ahead and X this out and you can see it's now reflected here in your data columns. To open up the chart, what you can do is click this arrow right here, and you can also drag this. So however much you want to see the chart versus the data columns, uh, you can make that decision. In order to actually use the screener, what you can do is either select a pre-made screen, either a preset or one that you've created yourself right here, and you can go ahead and load that. Um, or you can also create a new screen by clicking this button. In order to add the filter criteria, very similar to the columns, you can go ahead and use the drop down menus and add different conditions. You can say greater the open, greater than, for instance, $20. And you just go ahead and add that. And you can see it's reflected here as well as live over here on the left hand side, uh, limiting the number of results. Once you're satisfied, you can go ahead and save that screen. We'll just go ahead and X out for the time being and actually go ahead and load a pre made screen that I have created which is a good example of the use of the and or criteria in DeepView. Uh, this is really one of the special things that makes DeepView kind of stand out and allows it to be very comprehensive. And what it is is basically in DeepView, you can add an or group to your filtering system. So what this is, is group one is an and group and group two is the added or group. And what this means is that these filter criteria in group one are mandatory criteria, meaning in order for a stock to pass through the screen and show up in the results, it has to meet every single one of these criteria, which is basically liquidity criteria, trend criteria, as well as relative strength criteria. However, in order to um, pass through the screen, uh, once you go down to group two, the stock only has to meet one of these four criteria. So that means it only has to meet EPS growth or sales growth or making a new high or have an RS score of one month between 85 and 100. So all of these are mandatory in group one, and then a stock only has to pass through one of these criteria to be shown in the results. And the reason this is so good is because you're able to combine a lot of screens where you have very similar kind of mandatory criteria, and then one or two differences in uh, the screen. So you're able to put those all together, and that makes your process more efficient and saves you time. And in order to add an org group when you're making a screen, all you have to do is click this button down here and then select this group when you're choosing your criteria. And if you want to, you know, X out any criteria, you can use these X's. And if you want to select a different group, say you want to add a criteria to the mandatory criteria, you just have to select that group right there. And you can see it's selected here in yellow. So that's a quick run through of screening in deep view. There's a lot of possibilities here. So have fun with it, play with it. And once you're done, of course, go ahead and save that screen. Now, focusing on the charting aspect in DeepView, and to make this larger, I just dragged all the way over to the left. Uh, this is how I like to go through lists is with a nice big chart of just one time frame, or also add multiple time frames to my chart, which we'll cover in just a second. Uh, but really, with charting, you've got full customizability to change the volume, add as many indicators as you wish. And to add an indicator, all you have to do is go ahead and click this button 
and sort through the dozens and you know over a hundred indicators that we've got available, including custom DPU indicators, which we'll be continuously adding to upon request. Uh, so you've got full customizability there. Uh, you've got your drawing tools where you can draw trend lines and you've got full access to make this basically your ideal charting layout. And quickly, because I've got a trend line already created in order to um, basically add an alert to the platform, what you want to do is right click on Windows or double finger click on Mac and go ahead and click add alert. This brings up this pop-up. You can choose your criteria, whether you want to activate it as rising above or falling below. You can add an additional note here, a message, and also choose your notification settings and just go ahead and click create. You can see it's now changed to orange, signifying that the alert has been created. And now this will show up in the alert module, which we'll get into in just a second. But before we do that, one more thing about the charting module, uh, you're able to save both templates as well as chart layouts that really suit your style, whether you like to see multiple time frames, one larger chart, uh, whatever you would like. So in order to actually create a layout, what you'd want to do is first add all the indicators and set it up how you would like. You can also go ahead and click this right here to open up the possibilities of adding uh, multiple time frames where you can basically go ahead and change this one to a weekly time frame, uh, this one to an intraday time frame. Let's change this to a 65 minute chart. So there you go. You're now seeing three time frames at once, all on one screen. And then basically what you would do is go ahead and make a copy and then save that as a new layout. And we've got a dedicated tutorial uh, covering that a lot more in depth. Um, and again, DPU is all about customizability and putting the right data in front of your eyes so you can make an adequate trading decision. And not only can you in your layout have the technical criteria and really set this up how you'd like, you can also include the fundamental criteria down here. So we've got earnings and sales going back, you know, at least 10 quarters for most stocks and also estimates going out uh, quite a ways as well for both earnings as well as sales data. And you can hover over these quarters, see the estimate for estimates and also for existing quarters, you can go ahead and see the actual EPS, the estimate of what the street thought it would be, the percentage surprise and also the dollar surprise. And this, you know, detail is extremely helpful in indicating what could be, you know, a catalyst for a nice move in a particular stock. So that's a quick run through of creating a layout and also combining both the technical aspect and setting that up exactly how you would like it with the fundamental analysis down here all in one screen. Moving on, let's talk about now the deep list and deep view. And one more thing about the screener is once say you've run a screen and have you know selected a lot of stocks over here that you'd like to add it to a watch list, what you can do is then go up to the right hand side, either copy the symbols to clipboard if you'd like to paste them to Twitter, or you can go ahead and click the add to button where you can add them to an existing watch list or create a whole new deep list. And after clicking the deep list icon, we're actually now in the deep list module here. Uh, you can see that I've currently got my favorite stocks loaded. I can switch over to a different watch list here. And I've got all my watch lists here on the top row for easy access. And this is actually scrollable. So if you've got more watch lists that show up natively here, you can go ahead and take a look at that or also use the drop down menu to search for a particular deep list. Now, in order to create a completely new list, what you'd want to do is click at this cross button right here, go ahead and give it a name. We'll name this tutorial and click create. Now, in order to add stocks to that list, what you would do is basically go ahead and select them either in the screener or in another deep list and then click add to and then select this right here. And there you go. They're now added to this existing uh, new watch list. So one more way to add symbols to a watch list is to go ahead up to the top right hand corner, click add new, and then go ahead and type in whatever symbol you'd like to add. You can see you've got a search uh, suggestions that show up here. Go ahead and select the one you'd like, and then go ahead and click add. And you can also paste in a list from Twitter here, and it will interpret and automatically add those symbols as well, which is very handy. So go ahead and click the add button. And there you go. You can see it's now added to your watch list. As that's pretty much it for the deep list module, you've got the same uh, header sorting capabilities here as you did in the screener. And now let's go ahead and move on to alerts. So first things first, 
when you do have a new alert that's popped up, uh, you'll see a notification on the top right hand corner, as well as a number here, right here on the alerts icon that will show you how many new alerts you have recently. So let's go ahead and click this. This is the kind of alerts notification bar. Uh, you can sort this by different you know, time frames. You want to see all the alerts that came in the past 15 minutes, 24 hours, past week, or past month. You can go ahead and sort through them. Uh, then you've got the notifications themselves. Uh, you've got the name of the stock, whether it's falling above or below, the price percent change on that day. You've got the relative volume. Um, one is average volume. This is a little bit lower than average at 0.84. Then you've got the price surge. So what this is, is basically the price percent change over the past 15 minutes. So you get a sense of the current momentum of the name. And the idea is that this will give you uh, a quick picture of what the stock is doing on that day and very recently and whether it's occurring on volume. Um, and this same type of message shows up into your email as well as to your phone. Uh, so you can get it multiple ways and uh, make sure that you get that notification. All right, so here we are in the alerts module itself. You can see all the alerts that are currently active and also have been triggered in the past. Uh, you can also select multiple ones. If you'd like to go ahead and delete them, you can go ahead and do that. Um, and you can also go ahead and make any edits to them by clicking this icon right here, which re-brings up this pop-up. You can save changes or even delete the alert. Uh, you can also sort by these different columns um, to get a sense and uh, you know improve your organization uh, of your different alerts. And you can also go ahead and search for a particular symbol um, or alert right here. So that's pretty much it when it comes to alerts. And one more thing about the charting in deep view actually, uh, whether you're in the alerts module, the screener, the deep list module, uh, if there's a charting component that is showing, you can always go ahead and change symbols by clicking in it and simply typing, uh, let's go ahead and go to Apple and then pressing enter. And that brings you right to that particular stock in the charting aspect. Uh, so you can do that also in the screener and deep list modules. So moving on now, we've got the education portion of Deep View, which is the Deep View knowledge base. Uh, clicking that icon brings you to uh, this navigation page where if you'd like to learn more about alerts, go ahead and click here. There'll be tutorials waiting there for you uh, and very similar for screener, deep list, charts, and also an archive of different webinars uh, that we have done and will do in the future. And Xing this out, this can also be found uh, down here by clicking support. Uh, but first of all, this is the account module and clicking this will allow you to update your profile, change your password, uh, change your payment methods, and you know figure out any of those account settings. Uh, so lastly, we've got the support um, icon here and clicking this first brings up this page. Uh, this is where you can report an issue. If you have found a bug, um, definitely let us know and give us as much detail as possible and we'll implement a fix as soon as possible um, as well on our side. Uh, you can also go ahead and request a feature by filling out this form. So any great ideas that you'd like to see implemented into uh, Deep View in the future, definitely let us know. Um, I'd love to hear your ideas. And going back here, you can also go ahead and just contact us um, and also check the status of the servers by clicking here. Uh, moving on, we've got the Messages tab, which is where you know any messages will come in. Uh, we've also got News Updates, where uh, basically, we've got a summary of changes, fixes, added functionality that has come into the program. Um, so you can go ahead and read through uh, those update notes. Uh, moving on, you've got the roadmap here, and this is where you can go ahead and once again request a feature by clicking this button, um, or you can go ahead and simply upvote any existing you know, requests that have already been submitted um, if you would also like to see that in the program. Uh, you can also see the existing roadmap for DeepU, so what we're currently working on, um, and you can scroll through that and once again, give those upvotes. Uh, lastly, we've got the help icon here, which once again is just an access point for the DeepU knowledge base so you can go through the different tutorials. Uh, so that's pretty much a quick run through of DeepU. Uh, really excited to get this out there uh, and to hear your guys' thoughts, ideas, and uh, enjoy the program and uh, let us know if you have any questions. Take care.